In this video, we'll talk about converting between different number bases. In previous videos, we covered the concept of positional number systems and the number base, that is, the number of digits available to represent numbers. We looked at some specific cases of number bases, that is decimal or base 10, hexadecimal or base 16, octal or base 8, and binary or base 2. We also worked through some examples of counting in each base. In this video, we'll learn about converting between different base representations. We'll focus in detail on the conversion between decimal, which we are most familiar with, and binary, which is the most important number base for use in computers and electronics. Once we understand that, hexadecimal and octal are useful shorthands for binary and switching between these three is quick and easy. The maths we'll do in this video will be completely by hand or by head. There's little point to pulling out a calculator to do simple division or subtraction. In this case, we may as well just use the calculator to convert from one base to the other. Most scientific calculators, and in fact most calculator apps these days, have this function. The purpose of these exercises is to facilitate understanding what's going on. However, aside from a test or exam in a digital systems course, there will almost certainly be no real situation where the ability to do these conversions by hand with no calculator is required. It is important that you understand what is happening when a calculator or computer does this conversion for you. For our worked examples, we'll use the decimal number 1429, 1429. There are two main methods for converting from decimal to binary. Different textbooks will present these in different ways, but most explanations involve making some kind of table to facilitate your work. Don't focus too much on the specific layout, try and understand what is going on, and work in a way that most makes sense to you. The first method involves repeated division. You start with a number that you want to convert, 1,429, and because you're going from base 10 into base 2, divide by 2 is 714 remainder 1. We're not concerned with fractions, so we want the remainder. For the next step, the output 714 becomes the input. 714 divided by 2 equals 357 with no remainder. For the next step, 357 becomes the input. 357 divided by 2, 178, remainder 1, and so on. 178 by 2 is 89, with no remainder. 89 by 2 is 44. Remainder 1, 44 by 2 is 22, with no remainder, 22 by 2 is 11, with no remainder, 11 by 2 is 5, remainder 1, 5 by 2 is 2, remainder 1, 2 by 2 is 1, with no remainder, and 1 by 2 is 0, remainder 1. The binary representation of 1429 is given by reading the remainders column from the bottom to the top. In this case, 101, 1001, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 base 2. The second method is by repeated subtraction, sometimes called sum of weights. For this method it's helpful to know a few powers of 2 by heart, because using this method you start with the largest power of 2 that will subtract from the number in question. The first of these is 1024. 1429 minus 1024 is 405. We subtracted 1024, so we put a 1 in that column. The next lower power of 2 is 512. It won't fit, so we put a 0 in that column. The next lowest power of 2 is 256. 
405 minus 256 is 149. And so that column gets a 1. 128 will fit. 149 minus 128 is 21. And this column gets a 1. The next two columns, 64 and 32, are both greater than 21. So they both get zeros. 16, however, will fit. 21 minus 16 is 5. We get a 1 in the 16's column. 8 will not fit. 4, however, will fit. 5 minus 4 is 1. 2 will not fit. However, 1 will fit. And we have the same result. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 in base 2. The conversion from binary back to decimal is a little bit easier. It doesn't involve as much paperwork. Simply add up the columns where there's a 1 and ignore the ones where there's a 0. This is essentially the same process that I've just done, but in reverse. For example, in this case, we have 1 plus 4 plus 16, no 32, no 64, plus 128 plus 256 plus 1024 yields, as we know, 1, 4, 2, 9 in base 10. To convert quickly and easily to octal, simply group your binary digits into groups of three, starting with the least significant bit. Pad out the front or most significant bits with zeros if there isn't a multiple of three digits. In our case, working backwards, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Each grouping of three binary digits maps directly to a single octal digit. Converting each group to octal has the same result as converting to decimal because three binary digits can represent only from 0 to 7. In this case, 010 maps to 2, 110 maps to 6, 010 maps to 2 again, and 101 maps to 5. Therefore, 1429 in decimal is 2625 in base 8. To convert to hexadecimal from binary, the process is similar, but group the digits in groups of 4, padding with zeros from the left as necessary. In our example, we have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. The mapping as in octal applies to hexadecimal as well, only with more digits, from 0 to 9, and then from A to F, representing 10 to 15. 0101 0, 1 maps to 5, 1001 0, maps to 9, and 0101 0, maps to 5 again. So 1429 in base 10 is equivalent to 595 in base 16. From this, we can see that four octal digits can map to three hex digits. In principle, this makes it possible to use the generalized version of this trick to convert between hex and octal directly. However, as these numbers are fairly large, this is impractical. If you need to convert between hex and octal by hand, the easiest way is to use a binary representation as an intermediate step, regrouping the digits from 3 to 4, or vice versa. It's worth noting at this point that this kind of skill is actually quite useful in practice. The ability to translate quickly between binary, hex, and octal can assist an engineer greatly when debugging digital systems, if only a binary representation of data is available, such as when using a logic analyzer or other measurement equipment on a prototype circuit board. To recap, in this video we worked through some examples of converting a number from its conventional decimal representation into binary. If you understand this, then the rest of the content of this video should have been straightforward. We also covered the principle of quickly shifting between binary, octal, and hexadecimal representations of these numbers. In the next video, we'll cover representations of negative numbers in binary. Thank you for watching.